This module is part of the Behaviour Change Intervention Ontology, or BCIO, uh, online training program, whose purpose is to help potential users of the ontology to understand what it is, how it works, how to use it in their research, and for those who are interested, how to develop and improve it. This module provides a broad overview of the BCIO, what it includes, what information it contains, and how to access it. The module consists of this uh, video, which is around 10 minutes in duration, and associated resources, which you can find uh, either on the BCIO website, whose link is uh, displayed here, or in the description of this video. Before doing this module, uh, you're advised to view module one, which is what are ontologies and why are they useful, and module two, which is how can ontologies be used in behavioral science. The learning objectives for this module are that after the training, you should be able to describe the scope of the BCIO, describe the information it contains about each entity, and also be able to access the BCIO using one of the available portals. So let's look first of all at the scope of the BCIO. It's an ontology that aims to cover everything that you might wish to say about a behavior change intervention scenario, what we call a behavior change intervention scenario, and its evaluation in terms of, for example, um, how effective it is at achieving its objectives. So let's look at these two components. The behavior change intervention scenario consists of uh, behavior change intervention content, the active ingredients of the intervention, its delivery, including, for example, the source of delivery, uh, the style of delivery, mode of delivery, and so on, and any tailoring that might be uh, used in the intervention. It also includes the behaviors that may be targeted uh, by interventions. It includes populations that may be targeted by the behavior change intervention. Uh, it also includes engagement with interventions. That's the extent to which the uh, population that's being targeted uh, actually accesses or in some way interacts with uh, the intervention. And it also includes the settings and temporal context in which interventions may be located. Settings, for example, such as hospitals or community facilities, or indeed uh, just simply the country in which the intervention takes place. And finally, the behavior change intervention scenario includes the mechanisms of action by which interventions may have their effect on behavior. For example, whether it's by changing the way people think about things or feel about things or changing the environment in which they operate. And then the second part of the scope of the BCIO is around the evaluation. And the BCIO aims to cover evaluation studies with all their components, the methodology, the measures, and so on, the evaluation findings, and the evaluation reports, uh, the information that's reported in study reports, for example, about evaluations. Let's look now at the uh, structure of the ontology, the information that's contained within it. One way of thinking about this is in terms of uh, a spreadsheet in which you've got each of your entities in the ontology uh, down the side, these are your rows, and then columns which represent the different fields or things that we want to say about that entity. And let's just go through those. First of all, we have the ID, which is the unique identifier for the entity, which has a particular format. It always starts with BCIO colon and then has a number, and that uniquely identifies it. And then in the, uh, in the way that this is accessed uh, outside of the ontology and online, that's converted into a URL or a, a web link. And then you have the label for the entity, which is always unique within an ontology, although the same label sometimes you'll find uh, in different ontologies with different definitions. But in the BCIO, um, every label will be unique within the ontology. Then we have the definition, which lies at the heart of the entity. This is 
uh, a formal ontological definition, uh, which always takes the form of a parent class, whatever the class is that's immediately above the class that we're trying to uh, define, and then what's known as the differentia. Those are the, uh, the features of this particular class within the parent class that distinguishes it from its sibling classes. And then, because uh, formal ontological definitions are often quite uh, uh, hard to read, although they're technically precise and have to be, uh, we also provide what's known as an informal definition, which is less precise, but somewhat easier to read. And then, uh, in some cases, we'll have a logical definition. Um, now, some entities within the ontology are what's known as logically defined classes, or sometimes just referred to as defined classes. Um, these are entities which, strictly speaking, don't need a definition in the definition uh, field, although we do provide them, because in fact they are logically defined, often, for example, as the conjunction of two other classes. Uh, or uh, are some concatenation of other classes. And then a very important field within uh, the spreadsheet is the parent field. This is the immediately higher class in the semantic hierarchy. And this is very important because in the BCIO, uh, we always aim to be able to, and in fact do, trace the uh, hierarchy all the way up to the absolute most general thing that exists in the world, which is called thing, uh, in basic formal ontology, which is the, uh, the high-level ontology which uh, we link to and everything links to. And then, related to this, uh, we have the BFO entity, or basic formal ontology entity, which is the very high-level, very broad uh, type of construct that this uh, is ultimately an example of. So this is an ancestor sometimes uh, an immediate ancestor and sometimes a very distant ancestor of the class that we're interested in. And then we have things like the sub-ontology uh, that, that it's a member of, the component ontology as we sometimes call it in the BCIO, um, and uh, there are various other fields as well such as curator notes, synonyms, cross-reference, comment, which is also known as elaboration, uh, which allows us to tell you more about what's, uh, 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 what the features of this particular entity are. And then things like uh, we have um, a flag, uh, which is whether or not it's a fuzzy set. So for example, a lot of the things that we talk about in behavioral science are, are in inherently ambiguous in t as terms and so we flag that up things like adolescent for example which um, is just used to mean different things in different contexts it's an important idea but it has fuzzy boundaries and what the reason we have this which is quite unusual in ontologies is because we want to um, uh, encourage users to say, well, if this is a if this is a fuzzy set, what it means is you're going to have to operationalize it whenever you use it in a paper. And then uh, other things are uh, just a description of why it's, why it's a fuzzy set, who the curator is. A uh, very important one is curation status, where we have the options of whether it's proposed to be discussed, discussed, published, or obsolete. Uh, and ones that are published are automatically sent over to the Chaos Publishing platform uh, so that they can get a DOI number and you can access them in that way. And then we have things like to be reviewed by and reviewer queries, which are for internal use. Okay, so that's the structure of the items within the ontology. Now, in terms of accessing uh, the ontologies. Uh, you're going to hear more about this in later modules, but just very briefly, um, I'm going to demonstrate for you um, simple ways of accessing the ontology using, uh, for example, the ontology lookup service uh, and the BCIO search facility. Let's look first at a BCIO search, which you can access through the BCIO uh, website, or you can go to directly um, by uh, using the URL bciosearch.org and uh, you can access the entities in the ontology in a number of different ways. One is you can just uh, search for a particular entity that you're interested in, for example, individual human behavior. 
and there it comes up there. When you click on it, it then gives you all the details of that particular entity, um, the ID, curation status, when it was created, when it was modified, um, examples of use, definitions, all the things that were in the spreadsheet, whether it's a fuzzy set or not. And um, you can copy the link uh, and you can put that link into your references. If you use Zotero, uh, for example, it's really easy just to use the Zotero extension to your web browser and that will put it directly into your bibliographic database. Um, what you'll also see here are, uh, it'll tell you about the parents and any children there are of this particular entity. So this, this here, we have individual human behavior, which is a subclass of bodily process which we, we can then use to click on that, which is a subclass of process and so on. So you can explore the um, ontology in that way. The other way I just want to introduce you to uh, of accessing the ontology is through something called the Ontology Lookup Service. And the uh, URL is uh, given here and also in the description uh, for this video and in the resources and um, with the ontology lookup service you can look up any ontology that has uh, um, been published in a particular format and it'll include pretty much all of the ontologies that you would be interested in including the BCIO um, so you can search for an entity such as let's say individual human behavior and you can see it comes up here and you can then go to that and it displays it in a particular way and you can then expand that uh, and you can expand any subclasses and so on and it gives you the information about it there. So those are two ways of accessing information in the BCIO. So that's a brief introduction to the BCIO. We've covered what entities it includes, uh, the information it contains about each entity and had a quick look at how to access it. In the modules that follow, uh, we'll cover its component ontologies in more detail and, crucially, how you can use the BCIO in your work.